Looks like a beautiful day. There's something I really want to show you. But I gotta do it quick because if you look in that direction, it's not looking so beautiful out there. So let's go. There's something cool I want to show you guys. I'm in a town called Naperville, Illinois. It's, well, it's a city. Um, I used to live here you, a long time ago when it was like a small kind of quaint hamlet, if you will. Uh, it's on a river, the DuPage River, and there used to be a bunch of mom and pop shops and little restaurants and a cool coffee shop where I would sit late at night before I turned 21 and write r really bad poetry, which I know this is crazy, but last night I had an idea that I might actually put together in a book and publish. It's, it's really bad, but I think it might be funny in how bad it is. I should probably walk, but uh, we're in a hurry here. That's a restaurant called Potter's Place where I used to DJ Halloween parties. Um, yeah, I spent a lot of time in this town, but I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't really like it anymore, but they do have a couple cool things I wanna show you. I'm walking towards a restaurant called Q Barbecue, but it used to be a bar. I can't remember the name of it, but it was more, regardless of the name, it was always referred to as the Cougar Bar. Because, well, if you know what a cougar is, they were said to frequent there on the weekends. Without giving away too much personal information, let's just say they did. Oh, dang, I wish I'd known. I already had my apple. Look at this piece of art. It's kind of like a bench, but it's also like an open book. And this one is where the sidewalk ends by Shel Silverstein. Sorry, I'm out of breath from walking, man. Look at that. That is awesome. I love Shel Silverstein books. Except for The Giving Tree. The Giving Tree is sad. I mean, it's a great book, but man, it's sad. You know, it's actually fitting that I should see, I had no idea that was back there, but it's fitting that we should find a piece of artwork um, around, so it, centered around a, a, children's, a piece of children's literature, like Shel Silverstein, where the sidewalk ends. Because it's part of the reason I came down here today. Um, you guys know, those of you who know who I am, know that I'm a writer and I've written children's books as well as grown-up books. And one of my biggest inspirations, besides Walt Disney, is an author named Theodore Geisel, or as you probably know him, my personal physician, Dr. Seuss. And here in Naperville, Illinois, just outside of the library, which is that building over there, they have something very special, a, a tribute, if you will, to the man, the myth, the good doctor, Dr. Seuss. <laughs> Hey, look over here. The cat in the hat is about to appear. There he is. The one and only, the notorious, the cat in the hat. That is amazing. I love this statue so much. I've actually never been this close to it before. I don't come down here very often. I don't live here anymore. Ooh, you got some squeaky brakes, Mr. Bus. For nearly 60 years, Theodore Seuss Geisel delighted millions worldwide with his fanciful and oftentimes surreal worlds. His unbridled creativity in writing and illustrating his 44 books for children and his ability to touch the hearts of everyone was unmatched within the 20th century art world. It says this statue is eight feet tall. Um, there are nine of these sculptures that were commissioned to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the first publishing of The Cat in the Hat but this is the only one that was made available to the public. It's pretty awesome. I just noticed that the sculptor made his eyes closed. It's like he's lost in thought as he's walking. He's got a pretty cool walk, you know? Pretty carefree. I think that's why I love this character so much, you know? I love the cat in the hat. I even like the movie with Mike Myers. And I like the, uh, there's a new, new-ish, 
Cat in the Hat show on PBS that my kids watch. Called The Cat in the Hat knows a lot about that. In which the cat is voiced by none other than the great Martin Short. I love it. Did you guys know, by the way, that when they originally were going to make the Cat in the Hat movie, after the success of The Grinch with Jim Carrey, they originally signed Tim Allen from Home Improvement and the Santa Claus to play the Cat in the Hat? It would have been a very different movie. Oh, well. Dr. Seuss, I love you. I love you, cat. I love your hat. And that's all I've got to say about that. This is just part of the Naperville River Walk. It's a loud truck going by. I'm looking for one more piece of artwork. And it's another famous character known for wearing a hat. But I don't know where it's at. I need a detective. Wait a minute. Chief? Chief, can I get the chief on this thing? I think I see him. In 1931, the very first Dick Tracy comic strip was published in the Chicago Tribune. Dick Tracy was created by Chester Gould. Um, I love Dick Tracy. I loved the comic strip when I was a kid, even the old ones. I watched the old cartoon from the 60s that they reran, and I couldn't wait for the movie with Warren Beatty and Madonna. I, mean, I didn't care for Madonna so much, but I couldn't wait for that movie, so much so that I had a Dick Tracy movie poster hanging in my bedroom. And one day I slammed the door or something and it fell and it broke. And my girlfriend at the time went and bought me another one of a different design. I was so happy. I loved that movie. Even when it came out, I know it wasn't great, but I love it still to this day. And I just love the character of Dick Tracy. You know, he just represents a different time in American history and in cartoons and comic strips. He was really like the first superhero for us. Well, not the first, but he's one of them, you know. Didn't wear a cape, didn't wear tights, didn't have superpowers. But he stood up for the good guys and he beat up the bad guys, especially the weird, freaky looking bad guys. That's why I couldn't wait. Again, this is the first time I've ever seen this. And I'm sharing it with you guys right now. Calling Dick Tracy. Come in, Tracy. Look at this thing. This solid bronze. It's huge too. Look at that. Look at those tires is blowing. It's ready for action. He's talking into his wrist communicator. Before there ever was an Apple Watch. Look at that jawline. That's a man right there. Alright, I'm getting a little weird, but man, I love I love Dick Tracy. This is the coolest statue I've ever seen. I wish they'd sell like smaller versions of it. I know this is kind of a weird detail to focus in on, but even his shoes, like, they even got the laces and the, the fold in the leather. So cool. I like how his coat is, like, open. You could actually, a small child could hide with, within Tracy's coat. Oh, do you hear that? It's amazing. Now, the reason this is here is that Dick Tracy was created by Chester Gould, but back in the... Uh, 50s, I believe it was, he took on an assistant named Dick Loker, a young cartoonist and, and writer. And in the 80s, Chester Gould retired and he named Dick Loker as his successor, who took on the Dick Tracy comic strip. And Loker actually lives here in Naperville with his family. He's lived here for, I guess, decades. So this statue was actually put up in tribute to him as a Naperville resident who created this. I mean, this is a piece of American history right here. It's awesome. This makes me very sad. I'm sure Red Mango is great and all, but that used to be a little independent coffee shop back in the late 90s. Cafe Trieste, where I would sit and write at night, drinking coffee and listening to local musicians. It was owned by a hippie couple. Now it's just one more, one more corporate blight, along with all the others that have just taken over. Oh, check it out. It's, check it out. It's another one of those books. Sorry, another loud truck coming. Oh, but it's a pizza truck, so it's all right. They do campaigns like this every summer. One year it was like bears, and one year it was dragons. This year it's books. 
It's pretty cool. And businesses sponsor them and they pay for them and have an artist decorate them. It's pretty awesome, but I don't think there's a, let me see, do I see a, I don't see a Cats of the Castle book anywhere. There's a steakhouse, that's pretty good. There's a Pottery Barn, that's Pottery Barn. You know, once Pottery Barn comes in, say goodbye to your hippie coffee shops, folks. No, no Cats of the Castle bench or book. Oh well, maybe next year. I will say, if you want some radical Cajun food, that's the spot right there, Heaven on Seven. Unbelievable, so good. I can't believe I almost left, not knowing this was here. Dobby would be so ashamed. Look at this. That is awesome. Look at that. And look, there's the Hogwarts Express on the other side. There's anything on the back. I almost didn't look at the back. There he is. I feel like I've seen that guy before, recently. Maybe on the vlog. Well, we stayed ahead of the rain, which is awesome. In fact, the sky looks clear out that way now. But it's super humid here. This is like a Florida vlog. I feel kind of like Tim Tracker. I'm avoiding the rain, it's humid. I'm sweating. It's like I'm in Central Florida. But, uh, I'm glad I got to show you guys that stuff. I'm glad I didn't get rained on. Um, <laughs> I clammed up when somebody's walking by. I had to be quiet for a second. But uh, I, those statues are cool. I just, I love weird stuff like, like why, for what reason? You know, hey, let's put a Dick Tracy statue up. All right, cool. And they did. Now I wish the city of Chicago would put up a Blues Brothers statue. I feel like that's right. I mean, one of them was from here. I actually took a class at my alma mater, College of DuPage, with a professor who taught Jim and John Belushi. So where's their statue? That's what I want to know. <laughs> I'm about to say something super nerdy, super Disney nerdy, but I passed the barbecue place again, the old cougar bar, and it smells just like the food court at the land pavilion at Epcot, which, you know, made me very happy. So, but anyway, I had my lunch, so no barbecue today. Man, it smells good still. I gotta get back to work. I'm all sweaty now. Thanks for coming along on this trip. I thought, I hope it was fun. And, uh, you know, speaking of cartoon characters and children's lit, please do me a favor. If you haven't already, go to Amazon, order a copy of my book, The Cats of the Castle, book one, Quest for the Key. I think it's a lot of fun, whether you're a kid or a kid at heart. And who knows, maybe one day we'll have a statue down here. Who knows? Dare to dream. Talk to you later. Got a little off key there at the end. Sorry about that. All right. All right. <laughs>